One of the first things that I do after I take the hooks and split rings off, if I'm doing a custom repaint on an existing bait, such as these, is I test to see if I can take the eyes off without very much or any damage to them. Uh, especially these, now I probably have some, I think these are 8.5 8 millimeter, but um, oftentimes your client is going to want the eyes that came on the bait if you can. Now if you can't, don't try. Sometimes they're really heavily glued onto this. But in the case of these super spooks, they're five inches, big eyes, um, even meant for like brackish, some salt water, as fat, the uh, clown. In fact, the clown came with salt water hooks on it. But these come off relatively easy. I'm certain that I can find an eye the right size that I have uh, probably. If I go through these, most of these are my, my custom eyes. I should have, I think, some eight fives in the back of this. And without pulling it off the card, you just want to match it up to see if it's the same size. And it looks pretty much exact. It is. That is the same size eye. So we're good to go. I have the right size eye. They would all be red. I don't think I have any of the plain real eyes. These are real eyes, by the way. They're from Lure Parts Online. I use them frequently because they're a really good match the hatch. Um, red eyes are good for at least two of these because two of these are going to be peacock cichlids and those are the ones that I'm going to do with you today. We're going to do both of these. I have all of them to do but I'm not doing peacock cichlids on any but two. So we're going to get that done for you today and then we're going to talk about some different things. You guys have had questions. I'm going to try and answer as many of those throughout the video as we go. But I keep, yeah, I keep all my specialized eyes in the bottom tray here. And I have more over there. But just for this, I'm going to finish up pulling these off. And uh, shoot, let's make something cool today. We have a light coat of pearl white over top of the, it was really blue, it's a beautiful blue, it's this sexy Maui blue, um, but it, the only thing that it's doing is kind of accenting regardless. We were really after this bait for the flash on the side. What I've found is helpful for me as I try and build the bait on something like this from the bottom up. So I'm going to put my, uh, my orange, my fluorescent orange on first. Now that this is kind of masked, and then I'm going to build around it. So I'll do the bottom of the bait, then the top of the bait, and then we're going to spray real light those peacock colors. And then we'll work around that. So I'm going to hit this with some fluorescent red, which is a fun little color to deal with. And it is very bold. It's actually one of my favorite fluorescent colors. You can see this yellow that's on the chin already, well this red is kind of turning that fluorescent orange to begin with. And we're going to stick to it, coat that whole bait just like that. And to this we're going to lay in a little bit of fluorescent orange. Not much, we're not going to need much. just to give it that extra pop. I'm probably just going to coat this a couple of times. 
get two on each side. And that's pretty close to the color we're looking for to mimic the, uh, the underside and fins. On this particular bait that we're looking at, that orange does translate across the entire bottom of this fish, not just in the fins. So we're looking from the throat to the tail, maybe a little bit less going back towards the tail, but since we're not, we don't have a tail on this bait, it's going to represent that color. They like loud, poppy colors. I'm keeping my orange in there. I'm not cleaning in between that. We're working with wet on wet paint this morning. I'm just going to load a little bit of green in there. Push it out a couple of times just to get the right consistency going. And we're coming back over that pearl white now and laying in our fluorescent green. We're going to cover a lot of this fluorescent green with olive but I want I want this to be a very loud bait we're also going to work with stencils today as well I'm going to use a combination of Russ Allen's insane custom stencils yes I got this in the mail yesterday Russ thank you very much for the swag um, he was kind enough to send along some stencils a few weeks ago and I've made three videos um, that work with his stencils but I also, uh, I also use my own stencils. So we're going to do a combination between my stencils and his stencils on this particular project. Because I do like to make my own unique stuff, which I encourage. The more unique you are, the more that's going to translate into a client's attention because it doesn't look like everybody else's stuff. I always encourage you guys to do that. So now we have a really cool, see you can't really tell that that was blue underneath of there because we laid that pearl white down. Yes, you can still see the shad dot, but that will disappear when we put those black bars on. So just remember, you can pretty much change anything you want on any bait and still use some of the stuff from that. Like if it's, if it's a foiled bait or it's got tape on it. Actually, I think this is a tape on this particular one. Maybe not. Um, you can do it. You can absolutely do that. The last thing I'm going to do is load that olive in here because we want to soften this along the top just a little bit. Just that one stripe on the top. I'm working high pressure. I'm working uh, actually higher than I normally am, um, which was not intended. We're going to knock it back to about 35. It was ripping at about 45. Not my intention. All right. Now we're going to put in that yellow. And we can do that with our olive green in there. That's not a problem. I'm going to clean all this out before I do the black, though. Just run it through. Almost a fire tiger pattern. You're right. You guys are right. It is going to be a similar color scheme until we put those bars on. But I have a Sharpie. And this is all, you can take care of all of this with stenciling later. But if you want to match up your bars on both sides and you're looking for a simple way to do that, I'm going to put one dot there, one dot there, one dot there, one dot there. Why, you say? Well, it's going to help be a focal point. One dot here, one dot here, one dot here, one dot here. It's a three bar? No, well, on this one, there's that fourth bar. So the fourth bar is going to act as a cover-up for our little shad dot on this. So now, when we're lining up from the sides, we can still reference the top of this bait. See those dots. That way you stay almost entirely consistent with where your lines are going to match up. Now, if it were a crawl pattern, of course the crawl segments transfer to the entire bait so that way you do the back first line that down but this we're just going to do a dot because there really isn't a whole lot except for 
that uh, dorsal fin on this on this pattern to go by. So we have that in place. Had another clog. I've had this fluorescent for a while though. I've got a new fluorescent, but anyways, no bueno. Got a very old bent needle and all I'm doing is just pushing that. See, there it comes. There it is. See? Done. It's a gloppy yellow. Alright, we are going to return you guys to your previously recorded episode. Might be able to use some of this in here. How could I do that? Let's see. Okay. For the bars. We're going to be referencing these dots that we've laid. Let's just call them reference dots. And for... First of all, you got to make sure the paint is dry and it's good. We're good with that. We don't want to scratch the paint. A lot, or if we have it, uh, if it's still tacky or wet, often it'll leave a mark and we don't want that. I have kicked my pressure way, way back. Now you can see how it's made that indentation. We're going to do the same thing on the next one. Okay, same thing on the next one, roughly the same spot. And on the last one, roughly in the same spot. And what I'm doing, and I don't know if the camera is able to pick up on what I'm referencing or not, but I'm laying this piece of stencil, which is just a random stencil. I think it was from one of my um, camouflage pieces. So I'm laying it to where I can just see the dot that I made on the top of this bait. And then I'm spraying over to the right. And this is representing the inside of that. We've got these little lines there and that's okay because there are tons of splotches on this fish if you're looking at that. We're going to come back and do the same thing since we're working on side. We already have paint on this. We're going to come back and do the same thing on this side. And you're also noticing that I did it to the left of this shad dot. Do the same thing over here. And then just go right down the line talking with one of my uncles the other day who watches the channel. Thank you, Howard. My uncle Howard. Gifted writer. Real smart guy. I don't just say that because you're watching this. But my uncle mentioned if I weren't teaching, how long would it take me to finish a bait like this? And I could probably do both of these in about 15 minutes. So because we're teaching, it does take a little bit more time which I'm more than willing, it's a very acceptable trade, if not an awesome trade, because I love to teach. So we have lined, and you can see, since we're going up the side, there you have it. That's exactly where we want that to be. Okay, we have both of those done. You've got a really cool depth change. It's, you know, it's sort of a, a trick of the eye because of how the, the spray is, which is why you always want to hit on this and let that overspray come off of that. And we flip these around. Actually, no, I guess, yeah, let's finish this up. Let's finish this. I was going to, I was going to do the other side as well, but that'll line up. So if you want to do the same thing and create the same deal on the other side 
you can do something about like I could probably do this one let's do this just to be different there we go and run it right right around the same side and then you've got a really cool bar on your fish so I encourage you to find little pieces to make the bait unique and your own it's really just it makes it interesting it makes it like nothing anybody else has same thing here and again on the back one there we go and I'm still referencing that dot we made on this side. I'm making sure I cover that whole shad dot. Cool, huh? Moving right along. Do the same thing on this one. And the reason I'm going from left to right here is because I don't want to lay my little stencil piece down over something that I just painted. That's all. Now we're going to flip this around and we'll go this way just to finish this up. And one more and then we're going to do the accenting. Peacock's uh, just one of my favorite patterns to do probably because I haven't caught one yet. See everything changes because that that desire to catch that fish is still you know bass I see bass every day I still like painting bass largemouth bass smallmouth and now we get to do the accenting so on the top of this I'm gonna go back to the top and now we're gonna bury these sharpie points and I'm gonna do that with this this is I don't I, I thought for some reason I did or was going to but I don't have anything from Russ's peacock cichlid stencils and I'm pretty sure he does do well peacock bass yeah, I'm, I'm used to peacock cichlids. I know that they're African uh, cichlids. Completely different than a peacock bass. Peacock bass are Amazonian. The water pH is different. I used to, when I was very young, I used to work uh, at a pet store aquarium shop, basically. I worked with the fish. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to find one of my dots and just do a little you just want to make sure you cover it kind of look random while you're doing it I'm just going to bring this down to every one and cover my dot and now you've got a really cool pattern on top where your lines meet up and you've covered your sharpie dot and you've had fun doing it, hopefully. Now, I really like this little spot right here. So we'll just stay with that. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. 
we'll do this one for the last one there you go we are starting to look like a peacock this is going to be so much fun when we're done with this and i cannot wait to see what paul darcy catches with this because this is just daggum fun to do so we're just now going to come back and add a couple little dirty lines, I call them, and some accents to represent what this picture shows. Because let's go back to our reference. Let's let's do that. You can see. Get the camera over that. There's a lot of splotches on this fish. So we're going to add those into the bait. Just make sure you're doing low, 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 low pressure while you're doing it. And just kind of randomize what you're doing. You don't want to look too routine. I know the top kind of does look routine, but that's only because I wanted to get those over. The last thing we're going to do after we finish both sides of detailing is all peacock bass, at least most of them, have got this little yellow blotch with the black dot over that on their tails. So we're going to achieve that doing something like this, but we're not quite there yet. I would just want to keep going with a little bit of the detailing, uh, maybe give it something on its nose. You don't want to overload it, but you want to kind of make it look like your picture. Go back to this. Maybe add just a couple more. I did that there. Let's do this. Good deal. Flip it around to the other side. Got to make sure you get both sides. Yes, you can still see that flash underneath. I don't know how much of the camera is picking this up, but it's there. And every little bit helps when you're popping and chugging this thing through the water. I'm going to leave the backs off. I forgot on one of them, but I can fix that um, because we need to do that, that yellow splotch that you would normally see on its tail. Just a couple more down here. One on its nose. nose and then just go right down do the same thing on your other side of this one There we go. We're getting there. This is sort of a little triangular shape. And it doesn't have to be exact. But we want it to look the same. So if you guys can see that, 
that's what I've decided on and I want it to face kind of this way so we're gonna use this for this side because you can see it's oh good catch and I didn't cut myself I'll tell you what Seattle's best coffee it's no joke if you look at this picture it's kind of pointing this way so that's how we want it to look on the lure and I don't need all this paper so we'll just cut the rest of this little card. I love these things. These make fantastic little cutouts. See, now I can bend that, just work with that. So I'm going to lay down white and then yellow, and then we are going to hand paint the black in. I need to pull this down way, way back. Whenever I change colors, because I just have black loading this, and now I've got white. Um, I've got to clean it out and you want to clean under higher pressure to just blow that blow that paint out so now we want to kind of get that down okay we're gonna do it on all of them and then we're gonna come back with uh, fluorescent yellow do it again Good to go. Back to this side. Move that camera up for you guys. Yep, that should do. We now have that fluorescent yellow back in here. And it will show up more prominently because I also have that fluorescent green down. So we're just going to come over and lay it real light. I always want to lay it lightly. There we go. Flip it to the other side. Get all of our paint off of here. You can get multiple uses out of this. I'm probably just going to throw this away because I'll do something different next time down here just try and make sure you have it in the same spot and you will have black in the middle of this gave it a quick heat set because we're going to be laying black down I am going to hand detail that in not a big deal, you just need like one drop of this jet black. And I can put my fluorescent reds away, and the orange away, and my yellow away. We're completely done with that. These can go away. Olive green and fluorescent green. So I always try to clean as I go. So I'll usually be going right on to the next project wipe this down a little bit because I don't want to kind of glop it and this can be a little random okay same thing here want to make it look as natural as possible get those other lines in get that excess off And if you need to steady your hand, this is a good way to do it. Just set your hand on top of your hand while you're holding your helping hands. Say that five times fast, folks. And 
and last but certainly not least, this one. Ta-da! Now we gotta put the eyes in. Tuna squish. It's lunchtime. Oh, mm, good. Mmm. Real good. Gotta super glue it. With this, you kind of want to do the whole surface. Super Spooks have um, kind of funky eye sockets. Grab this. Make sure you don't get any super glue on your hands if you can avoid it. And because it's kind of the eye socket shaped weird and these eyes are a little rubbery they have a tendency to want to pop out so I'm just gonna hold them down with this little Swiss Army knife and just count off 10 seconds 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and that should hold once that super glue starts to get tacky, you're good. Same thing with the other side. And wow, these look awesome. Same thing. Let's hold this in place. Make sure that the fit is good, and it is. Perfect size. Love the red. Let's hold that down for a second or two. Well, ten to be exact. Doesn't have to be Loctite. I'm not sponsored by them. I just happened to grab that brand. That's usually the one that jumps out at me, and they're fairly inexpensive. I think Gorilla Glue is a little bit more expensive. But I think any old super glue will do. Wow. Sharp looking bait. We have ourselves peacock bass. I keep wanting to say peacock cichlid, but that's a different continent. Peacock bass are Amazonian. Peacock cichlids are African. Um, the pH balance in the Amazon is way more acidic than in Africa. It is alkaline based. And that holds true for pretty much all cichlids. You can find freshwater cichlids in both. The Amazon and in on the Nile and all the tributaries and everything else down in Africa. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I used to keep African cichlids. Love them. Um, and like I said earlier, worked at a pest. Man, I just, I'm digging this. I'm digging this, you guys. So we're just going to dip it now. Now we're ready to dip it. Got a little card here because I'm going to carry this over to the my second area of clear coat rack. My overflow rack. I always try and make sure I have everything ready before I take this off. The least amount of time with this in the air, the better. Now this is five inches. It probably should just go, but I can tilt the bottle if I need, or the jar if I need to. And I've got my little tail drip wires ready to go. Ah, one thing I forgot to do before we dip that, I gotta sign it. And I'm gonna be using my Uniball Vision Elite for that. Ta da! And I can, this is not gonna run or fade. Just sign this real quick before we dip it. There we go. Done. Let's get this in KBS. Now 
I had to tilt it a little bit. This is, I'm running through this. I've got a backup cork ready to go because this will probably be gone in a couple of weeks. That way I'm not going to make a mess. Ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, that concludes today's spray session. We did a peacock bass from start to finish using a 5-inch Super Spook brand name. I hope that I was able to teach you guys a little something. I appreciate your support and patronage. Smash that thumbs up button for me if you could and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers. Happy casting.